To help you envision this question, I'm going to use a FET simulation. And once again, we're going to use, instead of regular waves, we're going to use lasers. And the reason is, is because a beam of light, it's easier to see how it refracts as it passes from one medium to the other, as opposed to waves. We'll change it to wave mode in a second. So if I start with my laser beam, remember for critical angle, we have to be going from slow medium into the fast medium. And the reason is, is as it crosses that boundary, here's our angle of incidence on this side. Part of the wave hits the boundary and reflects. You can see that in the diagram. And the other part of it refracts down below. And you can see when you go from slow to fast, the angle of refraction is bigger. It bends away from the normal. And because it bends away from the normal, there's a maximum it can possibly reach. And you can see right away that the biggest this angle can possibly be is when the refracted wave is actually skimming along the surface at 90 degrees. And once you reach that point, we say we're at the critical angle. And the wave ceases to be refracting, it only reflects. So what we're trying to do is figure out what this angle of incidence is such that the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. We're, in other words, we're right at that critical angle. And anything bigger than that angle will not refract. It'll just bounce off as if that was a solid barrier. Let's see what it looks like with actual waves. So here's our wave viewpoint. And imagine this is our guy jumping into the, the pool. And on the shallow side, he makes these smaller wavelength waves. And then they cross this boundary into the deep side. And they start to race ahead. So the waves that are hitting straight on, no problem. They're going to refract. They're going to just be seen as longer waves on the other side. But some waves will be hitting it at an angle because the waves are coming off in a circular pattern, just like ripples in a pond. And I'll show you that picture in a second. And at some stage, that angle is going to be beyond the critical angle. So you can see right here, the refracted waves are getting narrower and the reflected waves are getting stronger. And at some point, the refraction is going to cease to exist at this angle right here, this critical angle. All we're going to get is reflection. And that's what we're trying to figure out. What is the angle of incidence such that the angle of refraction is 90 degrees? And it turns out that's the secret to solving these critical angle questions. What we do is set R, the angle of refraction, equal to 90 degrees. And then we use our regular equations and solve. Let's see how that looks first. Let's start by writing down our given information. It says the National Belly Flop Competition, the winner made 1.6 meter long waves in the shallow end. So down here I've drawn my pool and we see a diving board on the left. And imagine he jumps and splashes right in the middle where my hand is and these waves ripple off. The distance from crest to crest is roughly 1.6 meters in the diagram. And then you've got your deep and your shallow end represented by this dotted line over here. Now I want to start by writing down our given information. Our given information says the winner makes 1.6 meter long waves in the shallow end. So that's lambda i. And those waves get larger, obviously, as they speed up in the deep end of the pool. And they stretch to 2.5 meters. So that's lambda r in the deep end. Now it wants to know the maximum incident angle, also known as the critical angle, at which waves could approach the drop off and still refract. Remember, that's the definition of the critical angle. So we'll worry about that in a second, but we're looking at comparing wavelengths and angles. So the version of the equation we need to use involves wavelengths and angles. So let's write down our given information and the equation first. We're trying to find the angle of incidence such that the waves approach the drop off and still refract. Now the maximum possible angle of refraction. Now this is the trick to the question. When we're solving for the critical angle, we're trying to find the maximum possible refraction, which occurs at 90 degrees. So the trick is, all you have to do is put in R is equal to 90 degrees and go for it. I'm going to put a little star beside it. That's the trick when you're solving critical angle questions. Now the equation we want to use, we want to compare wavelengths to angles. So we're going to use this version. So I get 1.6 over 2.5 is sine i over sine 90. Now sine 90 is just 1, so we can imagine that's not even there. So sine i will be 1.6 divided by 2.5. So sine i ends up becoming 0.64. But in order to find the angle, we have to do the inverse of the sine. So our angle i is sine inverse of 0.64. 
So we see our answer ends up becoming 39.8 degrees, and I've labeled it IC for our critical angle. So that means any waves that are hitting this boundary at an angle greater than 39.8 will no longer refract, they will reflect, and anything less you'll actually see the waves on the deep side, you'll see the refracted waves. Now I've drawn a sketch to try and show you what's going on. The person dives off the diving board, hits the water right where my hand is at the center of these circles, and these circles start to travel like ripples in a pond outwards, spherically outwards towards this boundary. The circle down the center here will hit the boundary roughly flat, so they'll just stretch out and refract and be seen as waves that are 2.5 meters on the other side. Some of these waves at an angle over here will hit the boundary, they'll still refract and bend away from the normal, and the wavelength will increase, but the point is you're still not beyond the critical angle. And other waves over here will be exactly at the critical angle. So ones that are even further away, further from that central line, by the time they reach the boundary, you can imagine if I took this blue wave here and stretched it all the way around in a circle, and if we're right at the critical angle, the refracted waves will be visible, but they'll be exactly 90 degrees to the actual boundary. So they'll be moving straight down and anything bigger than that angle will no longer refract. So these waves down in here, where my hand is, anything bigger on this side will no longer refract because they're greater than 39.8 degrees. I'll label where the 39.8 degrees is on our diagram, and then we'll call it a solution. So the waves traveling right in here at this angle of incidence, which we're going to say is I C for a critical angle. That angle is 39.8 degrees, so any wave traveling in that direction with respect to the normal will actually be refracted at exactly 90 degrees. You can see it on the other side. And any wave that hits that normal line at an angle bigger than 39.8 will no longer refract. It'll reflect.